All right. So we're continuing on uh, with looking at velocity, speed, distance, and displacement. And uh, what we're going to specifically look at right now is uh, distance time graphs. Now, when you have a graph, uh, you can actually find the speed when you have a distance time graph by finding the slope. So uh, the slope of a line on a distance time graph represents the speed of an object. So a little grade nine math, actually, a little rise over run. And uh, the steeper the slope, you have a large slope, well, that means you got a higher speed. And so, for instance, just an example here is that if you can see at the beginning here and the blue part of my line going up, that means your distance is increasing from where your starting point is and as time goes by. And so uh, you're traveling away from a starting point at a constant speed because it's uh, a nice straight line, even though I didn't draw it like that. Uh, but then when you get to this red line, time is going by, but yet no distance is being increased, all right, or decreased. So that means the object is not moving. And then when you get to the green part, now you are moving, but in this case, your distance is decreasing from the starting point, which just means you're walking back. But again, there's still a velocity. And so we could find the slope of either one of the, well, either one of the colored lines. All right, but of course the red line, because it's a flat line would have a slope of zero, again, meaning you're not moving. All right, now to look at a specific distance time graph, here we go. Uh, and so this is a, an example, uh, example one here, where Dave drives at 40 kilometers an hour for two and a half hours, uh, then rests for 30 minutes, and then drives another 90 kilometers in 1.5 hours. Draw the distance, draw a distance time graph to show his journey. All right, so what I can do is, first, I'm going to start with my blue line here. Uh, Dave drives 40 kilometers an hour for 2.5 hours, all right? So you see in my graph here, I have hours down the bottom, kilometers up top. Now, if you're driving 40 kilometers an hour, it means you drive 40 kilometers in one hour. So I go on my graph, and I go over to one hour, and then up to 40 kilometers. All right, so I can draw that part. There's the first hour. But uh, Dave does this for two and a half hours. And so uh, I go to two hours and I go up to not 40, but add 40 to where we were, which is 80. So there we go. So he's going to drive 80 in two hours. Now, again, Dave isn't done yet because he's got another half hour. Now, again, if you're driving 40 kilometers in one hour, well, that means you're driving. 20 in half an hour or 30 minutes. So I'm going to go up to over to two and a half hours here and then add 20 from 80, which would be, of course, 100. All right. There we go. All right. Then go to the second part. Then he rests for 30 minutes. Now, if Dave's resting for 30 minutes, that means he has not increased his distance whatsoever so i'm going to draw a flat line over a half an hour from two and a half hours to three hours all right now he drives 90 kilometers an hour in 1.5 hours so one way to look at how he can do it in one hour is that we would find his speed we could take 90 kilometers so we can get it in kilometers per hour and divide by 1.5. And uh, we would get, let's see here, get a calculator out. 90 divided by 1.5, we get 60. 60 kilometers an hour. That's one way to do it. Or we could just flat out go, okay, one and a half hours, which would be, let's see, we're on three, so four and a half. I guess we could just add 90. That's, I guess, the easiest way to do it, isn't it? So we're at 100 here uh, at the end of the red line. And so by the four and a half hour mark, which is an extra 90 minutes or 1.5 hours, we add 90. So let's see here, go up. And so we'd be at 190 here. And there we go. And so there is a distance time graph for his journey. Now, what we want to do is part B here 
is find the average speed uh, for the entire trip. All right, so we, again, we're using our formula that we'd looked at earlier today. So we look at our V. Now our delta D we're gonna need, and we're also gonna need our T. Well, this graph represents that entire trip. And so uh, I look at the D or the T, it doesn't matter. First I go over and let's see here, uh, over along the bottom, four and a half. The whole trip took four and a half. So I'm gonna put 4.5, get the right units here, hours. All right, distance, uh, let's see, go over a bit here. And while well, we're having 190 kilometers. All right, so now I can find his speed again using the formula we looked at earlier today, uh, where we have delta D divided by T is going to give us our speed for Dave's trip, the entire trip. So that's even counting the rest. It's just averaging everything out. All right, so I got 190 kilometers here divided by 4.5 hours. Again, we're finding speed, so I don't have to worry about direction. Not that it gave it gave it to us anyways. All right, and it looks like our speed, let me see here. You take my 190 and divide it by 4.5, and I'm getting, let's see here, 4. 42 actually point and go to two decimal places always all right 4.22 42.22 and again if i look at the units kilometers are on the top hours are on the bottom again division means per so we have kilometers per hour here we go kind of drives like my uh my grandmother all right now let's see something else here here's another distance time graph all right, this graph shows uh, how Tom's distance from home varies with time uh, when he visits Ian. All right, so uh, we want to look at how long does Tom spend at Ian's house? All right, so you see this trip here. This is the distance from Ian's. Uh, so he looks like in the first part, he's walking there, takes a bit of a break. Then see how this is a steep slope. Let's see, let me color code these. So he starts walking, maybe walking along, or he's going good, decent speed. All right, for the blue part, and then he red is he's taking a break, and then green because the slope is very steep. Maybe he's running compared to blue; he's going much faster, anyways. Uh, then again, resting or hanging out at Ian's, and then he decides the purple here to because his distance is in decreasing going home to the fact that he gets a zero. He's at home. So uh, how long does he actually spend at Ian's? Well, the part that we're looking at that uh, defines when he's at Ian's, I imagine this isn't it here, the first red line, but the second red line. So there's the start when he kind of reaches Ian's house. And there's the end. And so if I want to look at the time here uh, that he spent at Ian's house, let's see. So he left at the 90-minute mark, and he got there at the... 40 minute mark, so uh, well, the time that he spent at Ian's, I would say is T equals, I guess you wanna say, 90 minus 40, which would give us 50. And again, our time is in minutes. All right, uh, how far is it from Tom or Ian's, uh, from Tom's home to Ian's? Anyone help me out with that? Let's hear some voices. See, I'll check the chat. I can't see the chat, so if you could speak or talk, kind of help. No, nope, don't see it. All right. So how long? Would it, oh, how far is it from Tom's home to Ian's house? Would it just? Are you just counting from the starting point to the end point? Uh, well, there's a bunch of endpoints, but I mean, like just like I from zero all the way to one hundred and twenty. Uh, well, one hundred and twenty would be. Oh, that's oh, time. Never mind. About. Never mind. Never mind. Distance, yeah, we're looking for distance. Um, I'd have to look at it for a second. Hold on. Wouldn't it be All three right. kilometers? Yeah, but because this graph's in meters, I'm going to say 3,000 meters, same thing, right? So, yeah, it is definitely three kilometers. Or uh, because the graph, again, is in meters. And as we looked at earlier today, 
there's a thousand meters in a kilometer. And so, yeah, he's 3,000 meters away or three kilometers, as you said. All right. Uh, for how long does Tom stop on the way to Ian's? Well, let's have a look here. Uh, well, if you're looking at the graph, can anybody help me out there? 10 minutes. How long did he? Yeah, 10 minutes. It looks like he stopped at the, well, it doesn't look like it actually is. He stopped at the 20 minute mark. And he started getting back going at the 30 minute mark. So yeah, 10 minutes. So again, this is just reading a distance time graph, getting info from it. Uh, on which part of the journey does Tom travel the fastest? So I've got uh, the colors there labeled for us. So which part was the fastest? So we've already established, I mean, red, the first red is he just chilled out or whatever he was doing. I don't know, tie his shoelaces. Ah, it took 10 minutes, so I don't know, maybe grab a Timmy's. Uh, but the other second red part, he was actually at Ian's. So out of the blue, green, or purple part, which one's the fastest? Which part do you think is the fastest? Something I already kind of mentioned already. Green. Yeah, the old green, because it's the steepest slope. Now, I don't care if it's downhill or uphill. Whatever part's the steepest, that is your uh, steepest speed, so uh, or your highest speed. So D, uh, I can't say the green part because that's on my graph. So uh, let's go with from 30 to 40 minutes because that's what the, the green part ranges. So from uh, 30 minutes, 40-minute mark. All right, then it says, uh, how fast was it? Well, again, let's get down our variables here. So we're looking for V. All right, uh, our T, well, if you're going from uh, 30 minutes to 40 minutes, that's 10 minutes have gone by. Uh, now we need the D, right, for our formula? The distance. How much distance was covered during the green part? A little bit tougher. 2,000 meters. <laughs> Yeah, 2,000 meters, because we're going from 1,000 down here at the bottom of the green up to 3,000. A lot of times I just see people look at the end part and go, yeah, it's 3,000. Well, no, it's it's uh, 1,000 to 3,000, so that means you've covered, yeah, 2,000 meters. All right. Well, then, uh, again, using that formula we've looked at today, V equals D over T. All right, so I'm going to have my D on the top here, 2,000 meters were covered. All right, our time here was in a minute, so we throw down a 10 minutes. Now, here's a weird thing. Uh, when I write down my velocity now, which I can calculate, this is not standard units, but uh, it is what we got for this time out. But 2,000 divided by 10 is 200. But again, when I look at the units, I got minute or meters on the top, minutes on the bottom. So again, not standard units, but it's what we got. That's how many meters per minute. 200 meters per minute is what we're looking at for uh, uh, Tom's speed. All right, uh, let's see here. And then we get to uh, last one here, E. How fast uh, does Tom walk on the way back from the end? So uh, which part am I looking at here? Blue, green, or purple? The purple. Yeah, purple's on his way back, right? Because that's where he gets back to home base there. All right, so uh, again, I'm looking at uh, my my variables. So I'm going to do E right here. Let's go with uh, purple because we're looking at the purple part. So we want to find that speed. All right, and so again, I need to look at the time here. So uh, he heads back to home at the 90-minute mark. Uh, and he gets home at the 120 mark. So if I look at my time. Just going to take uh, 120 minus 90, and I get 30, and it's uh, minutes we're dealing with here. Gonna fit that in there. There we go. All right, now the distance. Uh, let's see here. We started 3,000 meters back. That's how far uh, we talked about how far Ian's house is from Tom's. All right, so our distance. If you're going all the way back, well, you're traveling 3,000 meters back. So uh, his distance is equal to 3,000 meters. All right. And so let's see here. So his speed, again, using our formula, right? V equals D over T. 
All right, so we have our velocity. This time we're going to take 3,000 meters. And we divide it by our 30 minutes. So again, not going to be in standard units here because we've got meters on the top, just like we did before, and minutes on the bottom. All right, so if I take 3,000 divided by 30, uh, actually, he's half as fast as he was getting there. Well, for the one part anyways. Because I get 100 meters per minute. So he uh, one section as fast as he was 200 meters per minute. On the way home, he was 100 meters per minute. Uh, we could have figured out the blue part, but uh, it's not part of what we're doing here. All right, so again, that's a distance time graph where reading information, if you have a slope of zero, there is no speed, all right? But if you want to, if there is a slope, uh, we can use that slope to find the velocity of an object, all right? So by using a distance time graph. Oops. 